Could it be possible that your practice of testing your glucose at two hours after eating is contributing to your ever-increasing diabetes? I think so. Recently, someone sent me an email recommending the channel of a young woman named Lena who is pre-diabetic and is working hard not to cross that boundary into full-fledged diabetes. Like me, she tests herself frequently after eating, and they thought I should check out some of her videos. So I looked at a couple of them, and I wanted to share some thoughts with you about the videos that I watched. Lena's channel is called The Good Enough Mama, and I'll leave a link in the description to that. Lena does not seem at all like a candidate for diabetes or pre-diabetes. She's young, I'd guess in her early 30s, and she is slim. She would go to the doctor once a year for a physical, and all of her markers were near perfect. Her A1C, her fasting glucose, her blood pressure, well, they were all in the normal and optimal range. But when she had trouble getting pregnant, she went to a reproductive endocrinologist who immediately gave her a different kind of glucose test. I'm guessing it was an oral glucose control test, and at the same time, he tested her insulin levels. And he told her that she was pre-diabetic, which was quite a shock. At her age and at 5 feet 5 inches tall and 115 pounds, she seemed like the last person in America that would be pre-diabetic. To her credit, Lena did not blow this off, but immediately set out to improve her situation. It must have worked because she now has a 3-year-old son, and recently she started a YouTube channel. As I looked over her videos, I saw that she did a white potato versus sweet potato blood sugar test, which intrigued me. I've done that test myself, and I was curious to see how closely her results matched mine. In my test, I ate full-sized potatoes, but in hers, she cut the potatoes down to about five ounces, which would be about one-third the size of a normal potato. With the white potato, her pre-meal glucose read 90 milligrams per deciliter. At one hour after eating the potato with a small salad and a small portion of meat, her glucose read 146, a 56-point spike. At two hours, it had gone down to baseline, and it read 92. With the sweet potato, her pre-meal glucose was 85. One hour after eating, it rose to 158, a 73-point spike. And at two hours post-meal, it also had retreated to baseline and read 88. So in both cases, there was a significant spike, especially considering that she ate such small portions of food. But by two hours, all was well and her glucose was in a fine range. Now, the numbers that Lena had weren't too surprising to me, apart from the fact that if I didn't know she was pre-diabetic, I would not have expected her to spike nearly so high. When I tested a sweet potato eating a pretty large potato, I peaked at 201 in one hour. But if I had eaten one-third of that potato, I probably would have been pretty close to her results. Now, the most interesting part of the video for me was when Lena was summing up her experiences. She didn't like her peaks, but she seemed quite pleased with her two-hour results. In both cases, she was back to normal. She's been reading a book by one of the plant-based whole foods gurus who recommends a very low-fat and high-carb diet, essentially a vegan diet. And in this video, Lena seemed to be saying, well, perhaps these guys are right. After all, within two hours, I was in good shape. Back to normal. Maybe I can eat potatoes after all. So I wanted to share with you uh, a kind of a, a, a pictorial representation of her spike, and really it's pretty similar to what most vegans and people that eat the high-carb, low-fat diet will experience. So if we say that this is her Lena's baseline level, she rose sharply to a certain point, and we'll call this one hour, and then she began to drop. So by two hours, not a very good two, but doing it backwards, that's about the best I can do. By two hours, she was back down to baseline. So up and down within two hours. 
Now, here's the question. Is this normal? Is it healthy? Now, obviously, with one meal, it's no big deal one way or the other. <laughs> you go up, you're down in two hours' time, no big deal. But talking about doing this for year after year and decade after decade, is this desirable? Is this normal? Well, the reality is the whole foods, plant-based people will say, yeah, this is absolutely normal. No problem. All is well. Of course, you're going to get a spike. Everybody's going to get a spike. What's the big deal? Don't make a big deal out of nothing. And sometimes people accuse me of saying that it is abnormal to ever have your glucose rise. I've never said that. And I've never desired that for myself, that I would get zero glucose rise. Of course, your glucose is rising, is going to rise. But she went up to what, what, 160 or so? She jumped up 70 points after eating one third of a potato with some meat and salad, which should have blunted the spike a little bit. Jumped up 70 points. Question, is that normal? Is that desirable? Is that healthy? Well, Again, they will tell you that it is. The plant-based whole foods gurus will say that it is. In fact, a lot of people would not just go up to 160 as she did. They'll go up to 200. And even then, they're told this is normal. As long as you can make it back down in two hours, all is well. So here's the ultimate question. Are spikes good? Now, the first question, is it normal, is easy to answer. And the answer is no, it's not normal. You take a normal, metabolically healthy person, you can give them a high-carb meal. You can give them a full potato, not a third potato like Lena had, but a full potato. And they will not come anywhere near 160 or 200 like many would and like I did when I ate a full potato. They'll jump up to maybe 125, 130 max. And then they'll make their way down. And usually within one hour, they're down to normal. That's normal. Up slightly, back down in an hour's time, hour and 15 minutes at max. But to jump up 70 points, 100 points, 150 points, uh, no, not normal. So a gentle rise, normal. A spike of 70, 100 points, not normal. A truly healthy person will never do that. Now, why do these high-carb, low-fat people tell you that's normal? The answer is simple. They have to tell you that because that's what they all do. They all rise like that. And I've seen them on some of their YouTube channels and, and they'll show you uh, just how their glucose tracks. And sometimes by doing a little calculation, they won't tell you, but by doing a little calculation, you can figure out they're jumping 100 points. They're jumping 120 points between their peak and how low they go. A lot of times they'll drop down below baseline because their pancreas is pumping out so much insulin. Or maybe if they're type 1, they're taking so much insulin. So it'll jump way up and it'll go way down. And they'll tell you that's normal because they have to say that because that's you can't get around that. If you eat high carb foods, that is what's going to happen. This is your future. <laughs> meal after meal, week after week, year after year, this is your future. This is your dietary pattern, your glucose pattern. If that's how you're going to eat, high carb, low fat. Now, you you say, "Yeah, but in 2 hours time, they're back down." Sure they are. But the spike all by itself is dangerous. More and more research is showing that spikes are not healthy for you. You want gentle rises. You do not want sharp spikes. But spiking glucose is not the only issue, folks, because guess what? When your glucose spikes, it's going to have a, a little fella to follow him, which is called insulin. Your insulin is going to spike, and it's going to hang around much longer than your glucose. In two hours, your glucose is down. Guess what? Your insulin is going to come down much slower and later. And then you have another meal and you got more insulin, another meal, more insulin, more glucose, more insulin, more glucose. Not good. Now, if you ask yourself, which one is going to produce more insulin? This kind of a spike or what you would get with a low carb meal, which is going to look something like this. You're going to have much less insulin. And it's going to come down just about as quick, maybe not quite as quick, as your glucose. So, large spike, large insulin. Small spike, 
small insulin. And more and more research is revealing that high insulin is every bit as much a problem, if not more, than high glucose. In fact, the research is showing us that the way you get to be diabetic is insulin. The, the thing that makes you insulin resistant is insulin. If you can go day after day, week after week, year after year with high ins insulin levels, your body's going to wear out. Your body's going to become immune to insulin. It's not The insulin will not be nearly as efficient and your insulin resistance will increase. In general, if a person is running up high spikes all the time and high insulin all the time, the years are going to get you, my friend. It may take 10 years, it may take 15, and especially if you're young and you're lean and slim, uh, you're not going to turn diabetic anytime soon. You're going to be fine pretty much no matter what you eat, and especially if you're, you've done away with sugar, which the, uh, the vegans do, so that's to their credit, and they don't like white flour, that's to their credit. So in, in many ways, their diet is superior to the standard diet, but still, the thing that will get you eventually is all that high insulin. So, and let's get back to the two, two hour test. Lena, uh, when she first found out she was pre-diabetic, the doctor, her regular doctor didn't know it and told her she was fine. Why? Because her fasting glucose was good and her A1C was good. And a lot of people that go beyond that and do these two hour tests, and that's, a lot of people don't even want you to do two hour tests. A lot of doctors, a lot of nutritionists, and definitely the uh, low fat gurus, they don't want you to do them. But if you do them, they always want you to test it two hours, maybe three hours. And the reason is because if you look at one hour, you're going to get an, an idea, a real good idea of where you peaked, but they don't want you to know that. So at two hours, you don't know. At one hour, Lena was peaking and hitting pretty high, 150 something, 160. But by two hours, she was good, back down. Now, let's look at a couple of my tests that I've done. These are several years old, but they still, they're still relevant. Let's try Cocoa Puffs. I ate a large bowl of Cocoa Puffs. Pre-meal, I was at 112. This was back when I didn't have quite the glucose control I have these days. 30 minutes after eating the Cocoa Puffs, I was at 198. 30 minutes. Now, how would I know that if I only tested it two hours? One hour, I had already started to go down. I was at 182. And by two hours, I was at 131. Now, you've heard me say that my goal is to keep below 140. If I only tested at two hours, I would never even have a clue that I had jumped up to around 200 milligrams per deciliter. I would be totally ignorant, totally in the dark. It's like, do your two-hour test. Okay, 131. Well, not great, but not too bad. I'm under my 140 all as well. So I wouldn't know. You've got to find out where you peak. And uh, that's why I always call my diet that I recommend a low spike diet. Get those spikes down. You're going to get your insulin levels down. Your glucose is going to be good. Now, let's look at another example of a test I did several years ago. This one, uh, I didn't uh, note my pre-meal test, but by 30 minutes eating a sweet potato, I was at 168. Now, that's 30 minutes, folks. And that's high for 30 minutes. But at one hour, I was at 201, eating, again, not a third like Lene, but a full sweet potato, 201. One and a half hours, I was at 162. Two hours, I was at 113. So if I did not test myself at the 30 minutes, the one hour, I wouldn't have any idea how far I peaked, how high I went. If I just looked at two hours, I'd say, hey, Mike, the meter's telling me that I can eat sweet potatoes because look, I ate a sweet potato and two hours later, bam, I'm down to 113, baby, sweet potatoes, here I come and head for the store and buy me a big old basket full of sweet potatoes. <laughs> but I can't do that because I look at one hour and it's like 201 and I dare to believe that spikes are not healthy for you. They're not normal. They're not healthy. They provoke too much insulin. They're going to make you insulin resistant. They are the worst thing you can do is just have these high spikes all the time, all the time, every day, every week, every month, every year, every decade, high spikes, high insulin. It's a recipe for insulin resistance and ultimately diabetes. So no, you cannot go by two or three hours later. You've got to find out when you're spiking. Now, this is especially true when you're in your early stages. Now, the older you get, the more your spikes 
tend to stretch out. And instead of peaking at one hour, you may find you peak at an hour and a half. And the more diabetic you are, the more that's going to stretch out. You may find out you don't peak till two hours. But when you're in the early stages, chances are you'll peak around one hour, sometimes not even that. And that should scare you enough to say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to eat foods that bump me up to 200 in an hour's time. Or in the case of the, the sweet potatoes, I was already up to 168 in 30 minutes time. The uh, cocoa puffs, I was at 198 in 30 minutes. But how would I know that if I didn't test earlier than those two hours? So my friend, in order to find out what's going on with your body, find out when you tend to peak. If you're severely diabetic and you've been diabetic for years, it may be two hours before you hit your peak. It may be longer than that. But if you're in the early stages, pre-diabetic, or you've just been diabetic for a little while, chances are you'll peak much, much earlier. And you've got to find that peak and use that to determine, I can eat these foods, I can't eat this food. Now, she ended up saying in, uh, her, uh, in her video about the potatoes, well, portion control is important. So as long as I don't eat too much potato, I'm fine. Well, still her peak was too high, even eating a third of potato. But I don't see it that way. I don't, uh, there are some things where portion control is important, but there are some things that are just the enemy of the diabetic. Potatoes are the enemy of the diabetic. Bread is the enemy of the diabetic. Breakfast cereal is the enemy of the diabetic. I don't want to eat half of a bowl of cereal and say, well, I didn't quite go so high. I, I just want to leave my enemies alone and just let other people eat those. I, I'm not going to do it. The, the reality is you could take any food. You could take a donut and cut it into fourths and eat a fourth of a donut and your blood sugar doesn't go too high. And you could say, well, hey, I can eat donuts. Yeah, if you want to eat a fourth of a donut, but why even bother? Why not just eat your, the foods that are your friends and leave off the foods that are your enemies? All right. Well, that's my, <laughs> that's my rant for today. God bless. See you again soon. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.